Thank you, chairpersons. And once again, thank uh, Dr. Waragam for his invitation and his kind hospitality, as always. I come from uh, the south of India, from Chennai. The previous speaker has already mentioned about the, the, the depth of aortic infections and the seriousness. I'm sure no surgeon will be happy uh, to treat an aortic infection, but it happens something or the other way during our surgical career. The incidence varies uh, all around 2% uh, in graft infections and around 1.3% in native infections. And in-hospital mortality is always uh, high, almost uh, from 11 to 40%. So in the infections, aortic infections can be infected endographs, which I have seen earlier. It can present with infection in the aorta, infected grafts, and mediastinitis after aortic graft replacement in the ascending aorta, especially aortic root and ascending aortic replacements. The management principles, antibiotics, debridement, Graft explantation, most of the damage has to be done, otherwise it would be disastrous wherever possible. And the last one is the role of omentum. I started doing, doing omental transposition. The first case I did about 12 years ago, where I did a thor thoracic uh, graft open surgery. The patient had uh, infection, and the first case I did that patient is still alive after 12 years. Ever since, uh, I have done omentum in a few cases, which I will show in the following few slides. So, other than the, all the use of momentum, the, the one which is very useful is in very bad aortic infections. It has a rich vascularity and lymphatic supply. It is mobile, cellular proliferation. It's a, it's a viable and live graft, and it induces adhesion formation. Now, the technique of momentum uh, harvesting can be open or laparoscopic. You enter the lesser sac mobilize the great momentum particular on the right gastrofibular artery and then transpose the uh, momentum to the mediastinum uh, in mediastinal infections and then you can make a hole in the diaphragm anterior to the pericardium. The first patient is a patient who had a TOR done for descending thoracic aneurysm. He was a more event patient getting two, uh, two units of blood every day. And he had a previous bypass surgery with the lima and the saphenous vein graft. So this was his uh, CT angiogram. You can see the presence of gas in the periaortic tissues and an aneurysm bulging out. This is the PET scan which shows evidence of infection. And esophagastroduodenoscopy showed a mid-esophageal fistula. In this uh, patient, because of the graft is functioning, to the lima functioning to the lady, we wanted to preserve the flow to the myocardium. I did a femoral bypass in supine position, and the momentum was harvested with the laparoscope. I got the help of a surgical gastroenterologist. He always is very helpful in harvesting the momentum through laparoscope, and then removed the graft and all these tissues you can see. Then we found that the the the, the fistula was not very big, so we we decided we thought we'll just uh, interpose a graft and then cover it with omentum and see whether it will work. If it doesn't work, we will see, do a cervical esophagostomy and do the colon for esophageal pull through later on. So but then we packed it and put the patient nil by mouth for about uh, uh, about two weeks. He was given parental nutrition and uh, he recovered very well. Uh, he's a plastic surgeon, still started operating. This is the two-year follow-up angiogram. There is no evidence of any fistula, and he has done very well. The second case is a patient who was re referred as an aortic dissection. The patient was in cardiogenic shock with the tamponade, and that was the picture. There was a tear in the distal aorta, so the initial plan would be just do the ascending aortic replacement, and I did a debranching uh, for an endograft later on. Shifted to the ward, he started having fever, and that is the picture you can see the whole Media stand, the previous slide is so clear, and this is really contaminated. Sternal debridement, this happened on the 11th day. Then we did a momental transposition, and he recovered well, came off hemodialysis, and doing well two years after follow-up. This is a third case, a very interesting case.